You're listening to The Startup with Monique LeRae, only on L.A. Talk Radio. How's it going, Los Angeles? This is The Startup with Monique LeRae. I'm Monique LeRae. I'm back with another fresh episode. I can't believe it. We have hit over 200 episodes in our five years. It should have been more. A lot of reruns, but I was traveling quite often for the films, but I'm really grateful to still be here. We're just a couple weeks away, a few weeks away from our five-year anniversary show that I'll be doing with Sam live in the studio. Very excited to be here with you. And uh, just want to say thank you to all our listeners and viewers who've been with us since the beginning or just discovered us. We're going to continue our startup talk and all things. And today I have a guest, Michael, uh, Michael, S. Rogers, but Michael Rogers, right. from Jar Mark, Michael, thank you for making time on a Sunday to join us at the startup. How are you? I'm doing great. We just finished our gathering just not long ago, so uh, I've already talked for a good 40 minutes. So I'm ready. Now. <laughs> you warmed, I'm warmed up, up for nice. you. Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, again, thank you for sharing a uh, part of your weekend and your Sunday with us here on LA Talk. I would love the listeners and viewers to find out who you are and all the cool things you've got going. So why don't we go ahead and go full screen, Sam, and give Michael the floor and tell us who you are and what your brand is. <laughs> well, uh, my name is Michael S. Rogers. I'm a pastor in Ardmore, Oklahoma. Uh, we originally were, are from Indiana. We moved down here about three years ago to plant a church. And when we did, uh, there were some great things that happened. But uh, the big thing was that we got a chance to start a television show on uh, a Roku channel and uh, Amazon Fire. It's called Filled to Empty, and it gives you a chance to uh, find out what it looks like to be a believer in Jesus who is frustrated with the church and what to do about it. Um, and, and that's really been the big calling for us. We, I, I have been a pastor for almost 20 years, um, had been at a church that was growing in, in roughly 200 people, and just realized, even though we weren't doing anything wrong, we just needed to start reaching people who were frustrated with the way church was being done currently. And we always wait for our uh, for our younger guys to go out and young gals go out and try to figure out how to do new church uh, uh, paradigms and dynamics. And I thought, why not let an old guy do it who's been around the block a couple of times? So uh, I had a group that uh, said yes to that. And we started the jar and we we're at the jar and we we wanted to make sure that people uh, knew that we were more than just a church, that we were not just another gathering of believers on a Sunday, uh, but we really wanted people to understand that we felt like God was calling us to start a movement. What we didn't know was that God was already starting that, that movement in different ways. So it's kind of, think of it this way, um, we've for so long done church the same way that people expect something when they walk in your door. Uh, but there are thousands of ways to do church. And so wh why can't we have different ways of doing it, different modes of doing church, different expressions of the faith? And so we decided we would do something different. And so that was our big thing was to come in and do church differently. So we have coffee tables and chairs around coffee tables instead of pews or chairs. And um, we do a lot of the same things other churches do, but then we sit around and talk about it. We have what we call conversation and try to figure that out. Um, what, how are we going to apply what we learned today about the faith? But um, that led me to realize that my frustration with the church was a way for me to think about things differently. And so I realized that God was calling me to, to uh, get the word out in a bigger way. So we've done some, um, we done some radio spots for our the jar to get people to know what it was and they asked us actually to start doing a radio show so we started doing uh on the, the sports animal here in ardmore we started doing a radio show that uh it's called the jar and um uh, people started listening we before we knew it we had over 300 listeners and and people were really enjoying what they were learning from us so somebody said you should leverage that and turn it into a podcast so we suddenly we started doing a a podcast called The Jar with my beautiful wife, wife Carrie Rogers. Um, she is uh, amazing and uh, something this is new to her, but she has been co-teaching with me now there at The Jar. So that's part of our new expression is for the two of us to be teaching together and, and letting people see uh, that we both have something to say about it. Um, but as I got more frustrated with the church, I started realizing that um, that it was getting in the way. My frustration was getting in the way. And I started writing a book and that uh, I'd written a book before, it's Passing Lincoln, it's a fiction book, uh, just 
exploring how God takes $5 and uses it to bless a bunch of people. Uh, but as I did that uh, writing, I just started realizing that I needed to share the frustration that I had and help people to know what they're going to do with it next. Uh, and so I got a hold of uh, Words Matter Publishing, and I talked to Tammy Corwin about getting a uh, a book going. And actually, it ended up being a seven book series, and she gave me the opportunity to write those. And that turned into uh, Rethink, which is my first book, uh, which is a call to people who are frustrated with the church, uh, who uh, but really love Jesus and want to know where to go next. And so this gives a practical way forward for people inside and outside the institution of church to do church. It's the first of seven frustrations that I had. I'm frustrated with the church. But now I, I talked about being frustrated with my faith. So the second book just came out uh, in May and it's called Follow. And it's my interpretation of what Jesus was trying to teach us. It goes back to the beginning uh, as if I were, we were disciples of Jesus before he uh, died and rose again to see what that looks like and how to follow him. And my publisher was so excited about it that she decided what I really needed to do was turn it into a TV show. So that's what I did. I turned it into a TV show. And, and um, the first uh, whole first season is about those things that I talked about inside of the first book. Uh, but the second season is really about what does it look like for us to gather a few people together, one or two or three, and start following Jesus without necessarily being connected to a Sunday morning experience. And that has been a, a bigger blessing than I ever thought it could be. We worked through two seasons now and um, on Roku and Amazon Fire, just on Roku, we have over 59,000 uh, households that have said yes to watching it. Um, we know from the demographics that they're watching more than just a few minutes and more than just a few episodes. Uh, and that excites me because I believe the God, this is a chance to do something new. This is a chance to start something, a movement, if you will, that helps people who are struggling to get into church. Uh, a friend of mine calls it uh, PTSD, post-traumatic sanctuary disorder. And uh, they, they're struggling to get inside a sanctuary, but they still want to follow Jesus somehow. And so that's what we're doing is finding new ways to make that happen. Well, wow, very, very well put. And it felt it felt like it kind of just all flowed, right? Like in yes. any business, I mean, you're in the business of um, ministry and, and connection and community. Mm -hmm. And um, yes. so before we jump into everything that you just shared, let's go ahead with the top of it, which is uh, that you are doing a, a communal service. Well, I, you, I'll let you categorize it because this is the startup. So if someone's looking to start something similar up, yeah. what are the steps to moving to a new city and starting um, a community like this? <laughs> and how, how would you recommend people go about it? Well, I, my wife made me promise that we wouldn't do this all by ourselves. So one of the things that we did was we took a look at an organizations that might be able to help us. Now, Monique, we don't call ourselves non-denominational. We're multi-denominational. Um, when people ask me, I tell them I'm Methabapta Pentecostavinulic. <laughs> and uh, um, we just we recognize that every denomination has a bright spot and every denomination has a blind spot. And so we started looking for how we can put the bright spots together. Uh, so we needed an organization that would fit us. And that was the biggest thing was finding an organization that wasn't going to uh, hold us down from what we wanted to do, but really build us up. And that's where Nexus came in, uh, nexus.us. They are amazing uh, because they want you to plant the church that's on your heart in the place where you're asking, where God's asking you to plant it. So what we looked for was freedom, but with some help and responsibility. Uh, when, when to go there because we were a parachute drop is what they call it. We okay. knew no one in Oklahoma. We'd never been to Oklahoma before. Um, so that was hard. That was tough. Wow. Yeah. So it, you just, it sounds like a lot of faith and it, your wife is smart to say to, to get the help. And it sounds like yeah. you, you merged with a, a company that could lay that infrastructure for you. Now yeah. that you've seen a lot of traction, right? And a lot of people gravitating to this and then the next natural thing it's like you got to look at where the energy is in any business and it sounds like you had a lot of energy and and yeah and so what did you find or learn you know as you're forming your business your, your ministry your outreach um what did you what did you find as far as organization and business and how to bring people in and how to grow it 
Well, what Nexus was able to do for us that's really difficult in starting any business is all the paperwork, um, incorporating, getting our 501c3, having all of those things in place. That It's really good to have somebody walk you through that because it's so easy to make a small error here or there that can create big problems for you later. So that, that was one of the big things that they did for us. Um, and then they just kind of coached us up and help us to see that all of this is going to be dependent upon our ability to get into the community and be known in the community. Because uh, Ardmore is not like not different than it, many other places. Um, if you were born here, you're in. If you came from somewhere else, you have to understand how they operate, how they move. So that requires six months of just being in the community and knowing. So when you go into a brand new place, you shouldn't expect anything to really start in the first six months. Um, what you're doing is you're getting more information about what they are really looking for uh, and how that marries with the vision that you have for your place. Very, very good. Now, so I want to know about this thing that you, you mentioned that you were tired of the, the old church. Can you go into depth about what exactly without, you know, if it's personal, but like what were you what were you seeing that needed change? Well, I, I am a, a pastor, but what I have seen over the years is that um, as a pastor of an established church, um, a lot of times, a lot of those churches have been around for a long time. And uh, leadership is always what drives, whether you're doing business or ministry or anything else. So you have to have good leaders. And I was really shown the last place that I was in it was had the best leadership that I have ever had ever seen. Um, guys who would back you up, guys who and who would help you, women who would step in and do ministry. It was really good as far as leadership was concerned. But it seemed like there was always 15 or 20 percent where, you know, if you just threw them in a room and threw a Bible in there in 30 minutes, they'd have a discipleship program worked out themselves. And then you had about 10 or 12 percent of people who were never going to do anything, no matter what you did. So we always tried to hit that middle 70 percent uh, and get them motivated and get them moving. The problem is that most of the, that 70 percent felt like the Sunday morning gathering was the time when their faith had to be expressed. It isn't anything anybody's doing wrong. We didn't get tired with it. I just got frustrated because I realized that this is a this is a call to a lifestyle, not to an event. And so how do you call someone to a lifestyle? What does it look like to make that happen? And we just realized that the way that we're doing church right now allows you to walk in late, sit in the back, walk out early and never really let it affect you. So how can we make it mean more than that? I guess that's where we were. So I wasn't really tired. I was just frustrated because as a pastor, I want to reach everybody. I want everybody to know. Um, but there's no way to do that. And the bigger your church gets and the and the more you put yourself into kind of an hour and 15 minute slot, the harder that is. So we're trying to create a movement of disciple makers, both inside and outside the church. I, we have 20 or 30 people show up at our church. I went from 200 to 20. But in wow. doing that, we have increased our reach to 15, 16, 70,000. And we now have, um, my wife and I were just asked to create a new radio program in Memphis and in um, Omaha, and we call it Filled with Questions. And it's, it's um, people who are not yet believers, have questions. And we believe that doubts are just questions that haven't been answered yet. So what we do is we come up with the questions that people who are not yet believers might ask, and then we help believers know how to answer those questions. And we've been doing that for about two months now. We don't have any demographics yet, but we would have never done, if we were in an established church, we'd have never done all of this because we didn't have time. We had to, what we call feed the beast, that, that hour and 15 minutes on Sunday morning that takes all of our time. Very good. It sounds like you're really getting in there where a lot of people just want to do the routine, pass the collection plate. You're really getting into the trenches to answer questions. Um, let's go full screen again. And Michael, I want you to tell people about your show and how they can find this on Roku and Amazon Fire Stick. Okay. All right. We are, um, we call ourselves the jar because we believe that God fills us with his spirit, with his love and patience and kindness, and his goodness, his faithfulness. But the idea isn't to make us better people. The idea is that when we get filled, we start emptying for others. And so we use 2 Corinthians 4, 7, uh, which says, but we have these treasures in jars of clay to show that the surpassing power is from God and not from us. We are filled to be emptied. 
And when my uh, publisher came and just asked me if I would consider doing a television show, I said, well, if, if I'm going to do one, what I want to do is I want to help people understand this concept that we, we, we can't just get filled and fat and sassy. You know, you go to a, you go to a smorgasbord or a buffet and uh, you get all the food and you sit down and you eat, you might be even eating healthy things, but if you never exercise, then eventually that's going to create health, health issues. So we wanted to teach people how to uh, feed on spiritual things, but then also exercise them. And so she approached me with this idea because uh, she felt like there were a lot of people who were also frustrated. Um, the book series that I'm writing is called Finding Hope, Faith for the Frustrated. And it really does reach to that. So all of, uh, all of our uh, episodes are set up where we, we introduce attention that uh, what are we answering today? And then we uh, go to God's word and we ask God, how do, how do you fill that? God, what is, what is it like for you to fill that? And if so, then how do we empty it out? And so every uh, episode has three sections that does that. And then um, we, uh, she, uh, my, our publisher helped us to get onto Roku and create our own channel. So if you have a Roku TV, then you, if, when you very first started up, it has a little purple screen. Uh, Amazon Fire does the same thing. It has like a screen that you go to to, to just choose what you want to watch. On Roku, you just type in uh, filled to empty and it will pop up. It looks like a little, um, looks like a little jar uh, that is uh, being emptied out. And it says filled to empty. It's easy to notice. And then it streams. So it is always available. It is always something that you can go back to. So you can just watch them as you want, stream it as you want. Um, but that means you also can watch the episodes more than once if there's something that you really had a hard time understanding. On Amazon Fire, you have to go into apps and then choose it as an app or put in filled to empty. And after you select it, you got to go down a little bit to find it. Once, once you found it, it then becomes part of your menu. And then it's easy to, to go back to. We are about to start season three. So this is the perfect time to start uh, catching up on season one and two, because season three is when I really delve into my understanding of what it means to make disciples for Jesus. Wow. Wonderful, wonderful work. It sounds like you're going all in on your, your, your passion here. And I think that this is great. I think that a lot of people are looking for hope. A lot of people are, you know, maybe not religious, but maybe just looking for something positive right now. There's so many things going on everywhere that your approach to it is quite refreshing. I, I have to say, and you seem really, you know, genuine. I mean, you just dropped in, you said it was parachuting, you dropped into a yeah. town you never been to, you paid your dues, and now look at, you know, all the beautiful things you're able to create. And I can just see you going to the top with this. Um, it's funny because we actually have the Emmys coming up, and uh, I would I would love to have you guys out. I'll have to talk to your people, but we have um, we have an event that, you know, you network and you meet everybody and, and get the yeah, word out. Yeah. You've gotten the word out. You've got fifty five to 60,000 people following your show already. Um, congratulations. How does that feel? Oh, it feels great. But actually, it's overwhelming um, because when we moved here, our expectation was that we would be uh, ministering to the least of us and and maybe have 20 or 30 for the rest of our lives, if that's what it took. We hoped that it would grow. We hoped that it would catch on. It never occurred to us to go into all this content creation. But that's where that's 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 where we've been led. And that's just where we're going. Well, and it's it's smart, right? Because right now with social media, you have to have a story, and you definitely do. Yes. And yes. you're you're really showing, you know, you're showing up in a time where people do need some hope. I'm excited to to see where this goes for you. I think it's great. Um, I'm Thank impressed you. with the speed and the momentum that you've done this. But I I guess you know for this last you know few seconds here, what do you want to leave us with? It's Sunday, Pastor. You got a word for us? Oh my goodness! I, I tell you what. Um, I, I, I'm, I'll say this again. I believe that doubts are just questions that haven't been answered yet. And what I'm trying to do is answer questions for people. So if you have questions, go to michaelsrogers.com and that will give you a chance to access any of the things that I'm talking about. So whether it's the books or the TV show or the radio, you can get to all of it from there. And that will give you a chance to, to, to just quietly in the space of your own home, find out for yourself if there's any answers to your questions. Beautifully put. I love it. I know we, people, please hit up Michael Rogers and his wife and his ministry. They've, they're here to answer the questions. 
thank you for being here. I would love for you to thank come you. back and maybe, yes. you know, towards the holidays, we could have you give us a nice, uh, you know, antidote to go into the new year with and, and some hope there after the election. I know there's going to be a lot of uh, craziness yes. going on either yes. way. So. Yes, that's right. That's right. <laughs> well, we need something right. positive, Michael. So, yes, ma'am. I'll do my yeah. best. <laughs> All right. Well, it's a pleasure to meet you today. And guys, get with Michael Rogers in the jar. They're on to something. And I think that yeah. you're going to find more people uh, lean into this. So thank you for your work and for spreading a positive message these days. <laughs> thank you, Monique. I appreciate you having us on. Oh, absolutely. All right, you guys, it's a check-in show. I think my other guest is traveling. So that was Michael um, with the jar. And uh, he and his wife and his ministry are doing good work. And if that's something you're into, check him out. And you can check him out on Roku. Speaking of which, we'll be back next week with more. Talk to you soon, okay? Be well. Bye-bye. You're listening to The Startup with Monique LeRae, only on LA Talk Radio.